If you watched the show back in 2009, you remember that we built a Super Cuda. This was LMC's first full design, build, the full deal. The car ended up doing 208 miles an hour, but I'm thoroughly convinced that's only because my dad ran out of balls. Do you think the Super Cuda would do 220 plus miles an hour with the correct driver in it? Let us know in the comments. Before we jump in, be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button right now, and without further delay, here's the Super Cuda in HD. Well, what happened originally, we were actually in, in my showroom and we had done a, a Hemi Cuda convertible, which at two years ago at Barrett Jackson had sold for $2 million, and a couple of us were kicking around, and they said, well, for $2 million, bucks, I mean, you could build something, you could buy something like an Enzo or a Bugatti Veyron or, you know, any of those things, and it'll just kick its butt. And we said, well, we could build a Cuda that'll kick their butts, and they get, kind of started as a dare almost, and here we are. <laughs> and, can, and can this kick the butt of uh, Enzo? We'll find out in about two weeks. Well, six or 7,000 hours later, the Super Cuda is finally here at the Chelsea Proving Grounds. Chrysler spends a lot of time in development here up on the banking. 36 degrees banking up there, zero down here, 4.7 mile oval. Well, how fast is the Super Cuda gonna go? Well, we took it to SEMA two weeks ago. Literally, we fired up the car four days ago. We did a small test with the car. The car ran flawlessly. The car's awfully fast. Over a thousand horsepower that's when we ran out of dyno. We want to say this car is as fast as any other supercar, even the Enzo Ferrari. Let's see if we can get them. Before Chrysler would let us out on the big oval, they wanted to make sure that the Super Cuda was really a Super Cuda. We spent an hour in the Chrysler garages with their engineers to make sure that they were confident with the legendary motor car build. They all agreed this wasn't just another pretty face. One of Chrysler's engineers, who's also a test driver, put the Super Cuda through various handling tests. Then it was my turn to do the same. Considering the car wasn't running a week ago, any seat time before a 200 mile an hour attempt was much appreciated. Mike Lully, a Ferrari Challenge champion, who's one of those rare Enzo owners who really uses his cars, was also allowed out on the asphalt lake to join in the fun. Both Mike and I were able to find the limits of our cars, and then we both exceeded them. Matter of fact, I broke a rear sway bar as the Super Cuda has the giant 345 19-inch Pirellis on the back. Even on cold asphalt, there's still a fair bit of bite. Now it was time to go to the oval. We were all concerned about the track temps. On the way up that morning, it had actually snowed. To say track temps were not optimal was an understatement, so we thought we'd ease into it, taking some easy laps at first. got a lesson from the test drivers on oval etiquette. Always pass on the outside. Now it was time to make a couple preliminary runs. Mike and I stayed together through the oval, but coming onto the straightaway, it was time to put the hammer down. With the massive torque of the 522-inch twin-turbo Super Cuda, it easily pulled away from the end zone. freight train right off the corner, right up to almost 190 miles an hour. Then I heard this sheer whistle in a snap. I pulled in to see what had happened. Came off. The windshield molding on the right side had blown clear off the car, narrowly missing the end zone. On the left side, the molding took a little more work to remove. We hit 303 kilometers an hour. It's about 187, 188 miles an hour. And there was more room to go. But that car moves. I think we can still fix it. Okay. Typical feature. Okay, let's go out again. 
Now it was time for our second run. I was really glad now that we'd blocked off the hood scoop in the grill to try and keep the air out from the engine bay. The hood even so lifted almost three inches of the center as we got up to speed. Little wheel spin in second gear. Third gear, I'm getting some traction. Fourth gear, we're building some boost. Fifth gear, we're building boost. I can feel the hood lifting. The sound of the next pass was like a jet coming off the corners down the straightaway. The Super Cuda was blowing a giant hole through the air at over 200 miles an hour. Just gonna let the turbos cool down a bit. I'm not sure how fast we went that time. We hit 324. 324, 324 kilometers, kilometers an hour. An hour. But there's still a little bit left. <laughs> you know what? There was, there was a little bit left, so I think... <laughs> this has better aero than mine. You go out again, because I'm done. I got to hand it over to a customer. <laughs> well, you've done pretty good, you know. Mike really thought he could go faster. Well, after seeing him do a lap again at speed, I couldn't help myself, and I came out to play. Mike hit 218 miles an hour in the Enzo for a new track record. The Super Cuda on the last pass ran 208 miles an hour. It wasn't because it was running out of horsepower, it was definitely running out of aero, and I was running out of cojones. That car scares the crap out of me. <laughs> me I a little bit too. Admit. <laughs> <laughs> Want to see the process behind building the Super Cuda? Comment and let us know. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because next week we're looking at the ultra rare 1970 Hemi Cuda convertible. Check out our other videos for more legendary motor cars.